Welcome to the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. My name is George Ortega, and we are recording on July 11, 2017. This is episode number 11, Enlightenment and Inness. Okay, so this is a series about like this, this idea of enlightenment, which has various components that we've explored um, over previous episodes. And we'll continue with, with the, the different elements. This, this idea of inness is, um, is a bit unfamiliar. Most of the things that I talk about, you know, you'll, you'll be able to read about in books about uh, Buddhism, yoga, you know, different um, traditions and practices that, that lead to enlightenment. But this one's kind of like one that, that came to me more, I think, from the modern era. Uh, as, for example, like you, uh, with athletes, uh, when, when they're performing, when they're competing, sometimes they, scri they describe this idea of being in the zone. Um, this psychologist, Csikszentmihalyi, um, developed this concept called flow of like where, whether one is an artist or a musician or a, an athlete, that one is so focused on what they're doing that they lose sense of time, you know, they just lose their sense of self. That's a, an aspect of it. But this, uh, when I refer to inness, um, most generally, I, I mean the feeling of kind of like of being a part of, of this reality. Um, think about it like sometimes we are involved in, in our work, in our jobs, in things that we have to do, things that have to get done. And I think sometimes if we're, if we're invested in this kind of work, if we, we find meaning in it, then we, we have this feeling of inness, you know, the feeling kind of like of, of just being in reality, just a part of reality, a meaningful part of reality. I think sometimes when, um, when this would um, be more difficult to sustain would be when, when we don't necessarily have to, um, to work at, at a task or something, when we have free time. And so basically, so it, it's, it's the idea of you know, being in the moment, just, um, just being present um, and, and, and be, being connected to that presentness. Because, like, you know, ordinarily in, in, um, in, in certain spiritual traditions in Buddhism, there's this idea that you want to lose your sense of self. You know, you want to extinguish your ego. And uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's definitely um, helpful to enlightenment. But this is a bit dissimilar from that in that you want to kind of like feel yourself within this this reality and, and so that there is a certain kind of um, an association to a self but perhaps maybe in this case rather than being this this self that, that we identify as a body you know that it's, it's we as, as opposed to other people other things I think maybe in terms of in this is kind of like the feel that one is within reality, but maybe, uh, maybe um, a part of reality. I think, I think a good example of how this might have developed, because I think it's something that we're, we're, um, we, we start out experiencing at a very early age. Um, infants, before they, um, there's this idea in psychology of object relations. And it's very interesting that infants, before they can identify a difference between themselves and the rest of the world, between themselves and their parents, themselves and, and the objects around them, they have this idea that they are everything. That, for example, if they, um, if they you know, want to be fed and they cry, or they just you know, have that thought they want to be fed, and all of a sudden the, the, the mother or caretaker uh, appears to feed them, infants have sometimes like believe that they cause that, that there's, you know, that there's no difference between, you know, their thoughts and what happens. Uh, ultimately, you know, they lose that as they become toddlers, but that's the idea of just feeling very, very connected with life, being, you know, um, rather than seeing ourselves as separate, as, as every one of us being separate and then feeling separate and all, just this, this feeling of unity, unity with the rest of reality. Um, I think this, this idea of, of inness has to do with meaning. Um, a lot of times, again, if, if we're involved in a project, 
um, you know, we, we have to do something either for a job or for something, something that just has to get done, you know, that kind of forces us to, to focus on the work, to focus on what needs to be done, and that gives us a role. It gives our life meaning at least uh, for the, the, the extent of time that whatever needs to be done, you know, takes to be done. And um, so, but again, sometimes we, uh, there isn't anything that absolutely needs to be done. And it's during those times where for many people it's difficult. And it's like, there's, um, many of us meditate. Um, I've been meditating for about 43 years. And um, sometimes I'll meditate for hours during a day, depending on what my schedule is. But some people find it very difficult to meditate even for a few minutes. And I, even like when, when you first begin, I think for almost everyone, it, it, it is difficult in the beginning. And it has something to do with this concept of inness, the idea that um, when we're um, sitting, doing nothing, whether we're meditating or not, then we lose sight of our purpose, of our meaning, of, of you know, we, we, our, our mind is asking us, why are we here? What is our, you know, what is our purpose? We, we seem to, to intuitively have this feeling, this need to be vital, to be important, to be of use, you know. Um, so what happens, yeah, when, when we're sitting not doing anything, um, if we're meditating, it's interesting. Because if we're meditating, that still we're still confronted with this, you know, this feeling of not doing anything, of just like stilling one's mind, just focusing, let's say, on the breath or focusing on a sound, and we, you know, we resist that. But but it's even I think more pronounced because like when we're meditating, at least we know we're meditating. So you know, we ask ourselves, what are we doing? Well, we're, med we're meditating. We're trying to enhance our level of enlightenment through meditation. But again, if, if we're just sitting or just um, walking around without this intentionality, this, this sense of, of, of doing something, that's when, um, when the, the, the feeling of, of um, you know, wanting in this, it, 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 in a certain sense, like, I think a, um, a common way that we experience is, is boredom. You know, kids will experience this like, you know, it's, it's, uh, they're sitting around. They don't know what to do with themselves, you know, sometimes. And we experience this as adults. And uh, so, again, that's, um, so when, when we have this feeling of inness, it's, we're not feeling that way. We're feeling that, you know, whether we're sitting, you know, around or meditating, whatever we're doing, that we have this connection with reality. And it, it could be a connection with God. It could be a connection with uh you know, with the, what, what controls everything, this, this power that, that underlies everything. I mean, we've done, um, we will do shows about this, the idea that, like, you know, God, um, basically, or the, the, you know, if you want to see it as the, the controller of the universe, the c controlling process of the universe, um, to separate it somewhat from the conventional religious concepts, um, that, that basically... Uh, because of that, you know, we, we, nothing is really ever up to us. You know, we, we're just like, we're manifesting the will of nature, of the laws of nature, of, of, of physics. You know, physics, chemistry, biology, these are the, the processes, the, the laws and principles that govern everything from a naturalistic perspective. So, so in a sense, this, this inness would have a part of it of uh, just basically understanding or appreciating that, that um, yes, we are a part of everything, and, and you know, our lives do have meaning. There's, there's meaning to what we do, to our goals and our aspirations, and our, you know, our, what we do throughout the day, that, um, that this meaning is subservient to, to the truth that it's not really us, that we are manifesting the will of nature, the will of God. Um, if, 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 if my hand had a consciousness, you know, it would be like the hand would be thinking to itself, well, yes, I'm doing whatever it is that the hand is doing, but it's not responsible. It's not in control of any of that. So, so basically, we as human beings um, have the same experience. I've, I've, I did a television series, uh, 216 episodes. I wrote a couple of books on this. Uh, another TV show on this idea that, that we don't have a free will. Free will is an illusion. 
And so, but this is a part of, of just, you know, an identifying our, our inness, our being into reality, but with the, with the proper perspective, with the pr perspective that we're actually just being moved along like a river, like water is being moved along by the current. It's not really um, directing itself. So, uh, so nonetheless, even though we, you know, what we do is not most fundamentally up to us, we do have roles, and our roles change from moment to moment, from hour to hour, from day to day, and week to week. We find ourselves doing different things at different times, but um, that's another part of, a very important part of feeling that we are in life, that this feeling of inness, that we, we understand, you know, what our role is at, at, at each moment. And again, that, that you know, apparently we, we seem to have this, this innate um, need to, to feel vital, to, to feel useful, to feel um, like we matter, you know, because otherwise without roles, without these kinds of like assigned tasks and, and meaning to what we do, you know, we would ask ourselves, well, wh why are we here? What, what is our purpose? And, you know, it, it'd be like the opposite. Uh, it, it'd be like feeling like we, we don't have a purpose to, to lack the this, this sense of connection. All right, so again, yes, so, um, and, and it is like, again, like the feeling of flow, this idea that, um, that to the extent, that, and, and so there's various degrees of, of inness, of being, you know, in reality as opposed to out of reality. And so I think the most extreme we, we uh, mentioned before, this idea of flow, where we are so into reality, we lose, you know, our sense of self in the sense of losing that sense that we are apart from everything. You know, again, to, to lose one's sense of self is in a certain sense to, to be subsumed, to, 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 to see oneself within everything. And so we lose our sense of self. We lose the sense of time, you know, just, you know, um, Let's say we've been working on a work of art for, for six hours or so, and you know, we look at the watch, it only seems like you know, half an hour, an hour has gone by, or, or we're so immersed in what we're, um, what we're doing that we just, you know, the phone may ring, so you know, we're, just, we're, we're not aware of, of what, what else is going on around us. Again, so the, there are various levels of this inness, and I, I imagine that flow, this experience of flow, Ex, um, expresses a very, very intense, very powerful sense of inness. That you know, when we're in that state, a lot of times athletes, again, they get into that state. They need to focus on what they're doing in order to do it, to do it well. And I think it's that that sharpness of focus on the task. And a lot of times you'll see, you know, artists kind of like, and musicians also. They're 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 a part of their activity. They lose their sense of um, separateness from what they're doing. Um, so, all right, so that's basically what the feeling of inness is about. Now, let's, in terms of exploring it a bit more, uh, let's, let's look at it as opposites. So, so the, the opposite of inness, again, is um, sometimes we lose sight of our identity. And again, our, we could see our identity as, as, as individuals or more, I think, accurately as you know, expressions of this, this one identity we, we refer to as God or the universe, but, but we feel out of it. We feel disconnected from it, and it's kind of like a temporary um, forgetting of, of, of who we are, what our role is. And I think, you know, when you think about it, um, spirituality, religion, you know, to a certain extent, I think, developed from that need. I mean, it could have been, um, remember, we, we evolved from earlier primates and from, you know, earlier species before that. And there probably was a time before our neocortex developed, before our higher functioning developed, where um, we may not have had this, this you know, a clear sense of self, a clear sense of, of, of you know, who we are, of consciousness. So, so I think as we um, shifted um, species by species to this, this, this human being that we are now, Homo sapiens, we may have, um, we may have acquired the, the ability to sense who we are 
but 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 um, we would notice that with with sensing who we are, we we would sometimes lose that sense. So I think spirituality, I th religion, I think to a certain extent has served to remind us to remind us of of of, of this new awakening of, of of identity that that again came with our evolution with um, becoming more advanced as as, a, as an organism. So again, it's at um, being um, not feeling in it was it's kind of like feeling bored just like and boredom is again it's it's the idea of not knowing what to do um, to the extent that we cultivate this this feeling of inness this um, this perspective we it's like we're always at home with whatever we're doing we, we never feel out of um, out of um, our situation I mean Good example of this, like for example, if a, if, a, if, a, if an academic, a professor, goes to a, like let's say a, a football game or something, or he's, he's supposed to play football, he may feel out of it. It's like you know, it's not part of his domain. Whereas a football player, you know, may attend uh, some esoteric academic conference on something, feeling out of place. Okay, so I think we're, we're constantly, um, not sometimes we're, we're we're faced with this this idea that like. We, we tend to kind of like surround ourselves with, with, uh, with a group of people that reinforce who we are, then we reinforce who they are. And, and often, you know, if we find ourselves within um, uh, a city, for example, where, where things can be so anonymous, we lose that, that sense of connection. But that's something we want. In other words, we, we always want to be feeling the, the sense of inness that, um, that, um, that reflects our our understanding of who we are relative to um, the rest of reality. So, okay, the opposite of, of in this again is um, feeling disconnected, uh, feeling alienated, feeling without a purpose. And so, all right, so again, um, what, are, what are we, you know, because if, if, if lack of in this is feeling disconnected from reality, then let's, let's explore a bit in more detail what this feeling of connection is. And again, we, we, um, we started with this before. It's the idea of, of God. Okay, now, um, sometimes, let's just explore this in a bit, bit of detail. Some, some people will say that, like, uh, that you can't prove God, that God, whether God exists or not, is, the, is uh, a matter of belief. But let's briefly go through this. I, I went through this in my series of free will, and I think I, I did this a bit in a previous um, episode of this series, but basically if we define God in certain fundamental ways, I think it's not a matter of belief, it's a matter of kind of like logical proof that God must exist. For example, um, God is most fundamentally defined as the creator. Okay, so basically if, if you know, we recognize there's a creation and if we're scientists about it, we recognize that it started 13.8 billion years ago at the time of the Big Bang. All right, so like in terms of inness, inness is feeling a part of this creation, but also feeling a part of the creator. So God, in other words, like if there's a creator, if there's a creation called the universe, certainly by principle, at least by logic, there has to be something that created it. So even though our science, um, our scientific knowledge stops at the Big Bang, we can't discern um, with any kind of like scientific uh, validity what happened before the Big Bang, we know logically that something happened, all right? So like we attribute this something to God. God existed and, and we have to conceive again that, that God, uh, this reality that preceded the Big Bang exist, existed eternally. It always was because <coughs> to our mind, you know, we can't just imagine something coming into being without something causing it to come into being. All right, so, so if, we, if we see that like that the universe has been created and, and God is defined as creator, we see, yeah, I guess God must exist logically as a creator. Then the other, another fundamental attribute of God, uh, definition of God is that God is everything, okay? God is generally defined as everything. Well, you know, like the universe is everything. So like, so basically, you know, again, this is another logical explanation of, of, of how God exists if defined properly. You know, there, there are certain ways to define God that aren't very accurate uh, and maybe we can get into these if we have a bit, bit more time. But all right, so like God is creator and God is everything. Certainly there is a creation and everything exists. 
Um, then God is generally defined as omnipotent or all-powerful, sovereign. God is what makes things happen. And again, that's a, a very logical conclusion. In, in science, we refer to this as the laws of nature. We have the four fundamental forces, gravity, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, and electromagnetism. And these are the forces that make things happen. You know, um, and then we have the other, the, the chemical laws of nature, the biological laws of nature, the other kinds of physical laws of nature, the, the law of conservation of mass energy. In other words, like the universe is governed by laws and, and basically the universe is controlled by laws. So again, if, if we acknowledge uh, empirically in science that something is controlling everything, then that's the attribute we assign to God. So if, if, if there are, if, if things are controlled, nothing is up to us. We, we kind of recognize that. Um, things, a rock doesn't fall you know, to the ground of its own accord. It's gravity that compels it there. So if we understand that principle, then we understand that, yes, like if you'd find God as all-powerful, as omnipotent, God must logically exist because these laws of nature that govern everything exist. Okay, and to my mind, you know, God is also defined generally as knowing everything. And to my mind, it just seems very clear that if, if God is everything, how could God not know everything? I mean, like, um, this, this, this universe is so amazingly complex. The, the mysteries of, of, of how these laws of nature came into being, how the, how the, 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 um, the Big, Big Bang itself came into being, the complexity. I mean, like, just right now, you're, you're watching this on YouTube or on your, your cable station. There is so much mysterious complexity to technology that, um, that is all subsumed you know, within the laws of nature, within this creation. So, so you have to kind of like conclude that, that, that God, um, as, as omniscient, uh, as knowing everything, makes sense because like how can you control everything, how can you be in control of everything um, without knowing that which you're controlling? All right, so, so basically um, we, we could like, for example, dispute the, the omnibenevolence of God. Some people say God is all good. I can't see that because like if God is in control of everything and there is what we define as good in this world and we define as not good or evil or bad, whatever, then I think you have to like concede that God is responsible for both. That's not a very popular, you know, conception, but, but when you see God in that way, it's, it's a bit easier to accept the reality of, of, of God. You know, again, apart from the, the, the theology, the Judeo-Christian theology that sometimes, you know, presents God um, in a way that, that makes it difficult to accept. Again, like, if, uh, it's hard to accept that God is all good if there's so much pain and suffering and evil in the world, you know, and, and if God is all powerful, you know, because these things contradict each other. All right, so like, back to the, the idea of, of inness. So like, so you want to feel connected with this source of everything. And um, I was talking to a friend of mine um, a couple of days ago, and I asked him, you know, who would he really want to be really great friends with? And um, he named three people, and I think there were three celebrities. Oh, Sam Harris, I think, was one. A um, couple other people. And basically, um, then we explored, well, why do you want to uh, feel, why do you want to be this person's friend? Or what, what would you get from being this person's friend? Um, oh, I think he also mentioned um, Jesus, whatever, is it living in that? So like, and he said, well, you know, we kind of like, we uh, figured that the benefit of that is a kind of identity through association. In other words, like, if, if you're friends with Jesus, for example, then that, that kind of assigns to you a certain kind of specialness. In other words, like, if you view someone as very accomplished, very special, and you're, you kind of associate yourself with that person, then that leads to very a positive self-image. Again, we are all connected, we're all one, but we have this part of us that, that, that has this difference, and, and as long as we have it, I think we want to kind of like cultivate it so that it brings on the greatest associations. That's, that's for example, when, when we have a favorite um, you know, sports um, player, you know, a football player, a baseball player, 
you know, it's this association with them that, that's part of us, you know, part, it makes us feel good. It makes us feel good to, to have that, you know, connection. So the idea with God is like, you know, to the, this, this sense of inness has to do with, um, with associating oneself with actually the only power in the universe, certainly the highest power if we're going to kind of like, you know, see it from the perspective of, of us having a free will. It's a, it's a mistaken perspective, but, you know, it's very powerful perspective nonetheless. You know, so long as we still have that, you know, that we want to identify ourselves with this God, with this controller of, of everything. So like this feeling of connectedness, this feeling of inness, we want to be connected to the creator, the, the ruler, <laughs> the, the omniscient, you know, um, ruler and, 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 and everything of, of, the, of the universe. Um, okay, and, and naturally, I think we also, you know, since we are social beings, we want this sense of inness to translate to everyone around us. I mean, it's, again, sometimes if you live in a city, you're walking down a, a sidewalk, and sometimes everybody's so busy, so preoccupied with whatever, that people aren't even acknowledging each other. I think in small towns, people at least, you know, say hi or, or, or not or whatever. But, um, but you want to kind of, nonetheless, this, this feeling of inness, you know, you want to apply that to other people to kind of like feel so connected with everyone that you don't have to like greet each other. You don't have to say anything. You, it's just a knowledge that we're all one, that we're all manifesting, you know, this, this, this God's will, this universal will, and that, that helps to keep us, you know, in this, this feeling of, 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 of inness, you know, in reality as opposed to, of, from, um, as opposed to feeling separate. All right, so this has been a bit of a complicated kind of like uh, topic, and it, it is, you know, it's generally not so much found in the literature on enlightenment, but I thought it would be a good idea to get to go through this. So, you know, this is a, this, this staying in this, it, it requires constant refocusing. You know, we, we feel out of it, we remind ourselves we're in it in various ways, and we stay in it. Again, it's a part of enlightenment. So, all right, that's all we have time for today. So, you know, in future episodes, we'll explore other episodes, or other ideas related to enlightenment, how to become enlightened or become more enlightened. Thanks for watching.